Wonder Boy is a game series that began in arcades in 1986, and although it started as a straight platformer, the game spawned a sequel that adopted some RPG elements before becoming a series that became known for that genre on Sega consoles. While the series has been dormant for a few decades, there has been a resurgence as of late, with remakes of Wonder Boy 3 and Monster World 4, as well as the spiritual successor Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom releasing in recent years. Now we have the release of the Wonder Boy collection, containing four games from the series history. Is this collection full of wonder, or is it a bit of a blunder? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now let's find out. Containing four games from the series history, there are some differences in gameplay styles. It was a curious experience to play through these games in order and see how the Wonder Boy series evolved from title to title. The first game, Wonder Boy, is just a straight up platformer from the arcades. You play as Tom Tom on a quest to save your girlfriend Tanya. You can pick up an axe to use as a weapon on the enemies, as well as other power ups including invincibility and a skateboard that will propel you forward. The timer in the level can only be replenished by collecting the food items that appear as you play. Whilst this game did it first, the formula was adapted by Hudson Soft into the Adventure Island series and it's probably better known via that series owing to the fact that the Wonder Boy games went in a different direction as we're about to see. The controls in this first game can feel a bit slippery at times, making the jumps more difficult than they need to be, and assigning the run to the R button, essential for some of the gaps, is not the most comfortable button to hold. The trigger button would have been a better option, although the ZL and ZR buttons are used to rewind and fast forward the gameplay, respectively, across the collection. Sometimes the level design also feels a bit cheap here, with enemies or hazards just appearing out of nowhere. It certainly shows its arcade roots in this respect, although this is where that rewind feature comes in useful, as does clicking in the left stick, which adds extra credits, as many as you like, meaning you can have infinite continues. The second game then, Wonder Boy in Monsterland, takes a different style to the first. It's more in keeping with how the series is mostly remembered. It takes on a more action RPG style of gameplay, where you collect coins to buy new weapons and upgrades, although instead of being a bigger explorable world, this game is level based. You start out quite weak and slow moving, but you'll see your character become more powerful and faster by purchasing new armour or boots. Although the main design is quite linear, there is exploration involved as there are secrets to be found and it is advisable to collect as many coins as you can, a lot of which can be found just by jumping around randomly. There is also an hourglass on the screen in the bottom left and every time this empties you lose some health. This is an interesting way to implement a time limit in a game like this and refills can be found by defeating enemies. This game was an interesting experience, I found the controls to be sluggish at first, although you can increase your speed, and again there were times where things felt a bit unfair, but much like the first one you can insert credits to create unlimited continues. Wonder Boy in Monster World, which is the fifth Wonder Boy game but the third in the Monster World sub-series, feels like a big upgrade on the previous two, where you have a more open world, visiting different areas and villages on a quest to save the land from an army of invading monsters. Not being level based, this takes the adventure game style where you have platforming areas, defeating enemies with your weapon, and in the villages you can talk to people to give you hints, buy items, or progress the story. Sometimes talking to a specific person is required, for example you may find a key item but won't be able to progress the story until a particular villager tells you that they'd lost it. Although gripes like this typically come with playing retro titles, one advantage this collection gives you is to be able to use the fast forward feature which I did use a lot whilst backtracking. The world and levels in this title are very well designed and fun to explore, and one feature I really did like is that you can always see your enemy's health bar at the top of the screen, which is something I always appreciate. The fourth and final game in the collection is Monster World 4, a game that was originally a Japanese exclusive, but has since seen releases through collections, virtual console services, and it even had a remake which we did review on the channel last year. I find this to be the best game on the collection. It gives you an enjoyable world to explore, with distinctive areas providing some great platforming challenges, exploration, and fun characters. I obviously haven't gone into a lot of detail about each game, which is the curse of reviewing a collection, so I just aim to sum up what each game is about and how I found them. I did find the games to be a bit of a mixed bag overall, some have most certainly aged better than others, but it's always interesting to see the evolution of a series on a collection such as this. 
The quality of life features I've mentioned do help with the more frustrating elements, but you can obviously ignore these if you are a purist. I did find the fast forward feature very useful for general walking and dialogue sections, as well as being able to insert infinite credits for unlimited continues. On balance, gameplay scores 15 out of 20. Controls do improve as the games go on, but the early games can feel a bit awkward at times. They score 14 out of 20. Going into the presentation of this collection, I found for the most part that they have a retro charm to them and I enjoyed the bright colourful visuals and simple designs of the earlier titles as well as the more detailed Mega Drive games included. The levels within each game had distinctive backgrounds making them feel like living worlds. Wonder Boy had very simple animations on the characters, although everything was clear to see. Wonder Boy in Monster Land had quite a busy user interface, which could make it feel a bit cluttered and boxed in. And although your character's design leaves a lot to be desired at first, he does look more the part as you gain new armor and upgrades. When you move into the Mega Drive titles, you get more detailed backgrounds and animations, and I liked the fact that you had the arcade, 8-bit and 16-bit eras represented as the series progressed. Onto the music, the Mega Drive games hold up stronger than the earlier titles as you would expect, with variety between level themes such as the jaunty tunes you'll hear at the beach area, in contrast to the more sinister tones in the dungeons. In the original Wonder Boy arcade game, I found the music to be a bit grating considering that I was hearing the same short loops over and over again, whereas Wonder Boy in Monster Land had some nice chip tunes and made me feel nostalgic for that era. It did have the unfortunate feature though of a low health alert beeping noise that was unbearable, especially when combined with the background music. If that's not an incentive to play better, I don't know what is. The sound effects are on point with the classic bleeps of coins being collected and slashes of your sword that you'd hear from old school games. There are also extra options you can apply to the games from the main menu, such as adjusting aspect ratio to your liking, as well as other display options such as filters and shaders. Overall, the games are presented very well and seem to be emulated accurately, with a nice little border filling the sides of the screen and a gallery that you can view from the menu. Visual score 15 out of 20. Audio hits the right notes at times, but some aspects of this particular part of the package have not aged well. It gets 14 out of 20. The Wonder Boy collection costs £24.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. For this, as we said, you are getting four games which collectively can take you about 20 hours just by playing the main stories with extra bits included too. There are some positives and negatives to the value of this collection. Firstly, the inclusion of Monster World 4 on this collection. Seeing as the remake goes for a higher price than this whole collection, this makes this bundle a cheaper way to own this game for your Switch. Each game included is fun and it's an interesting insight into the Wonder Boy franchise, especially when playing through them in order, as I did, to see the progression from game to game. In terms of the negatives, it's mainly down to the fact that the collection feels incomplete. My favourite game in the series, Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap, is not included here, nor is Wonder Boy 3 Monster Layer. It's a shame that these games aren't on here as they would have rounded out the package quite nicely, but it appears much like the Turrican collection from last year, some games are instead reserved for the limited physical releases sold by strictly limited games. It's disappointing that these aren't just included on the collection as standard, rather than used as part of a small print run variant. The usual quality of life features you'd expect from such collections are present and correct, save states, rewinding, etc. And each game is definitely worth your time, whether you are a veteran of the series or a newcomer interested in a piece of gaming history. Value scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, the Wonder Boy collection brings four classic games together in one package and I found they improved with each subsequent game. It's a shame that there are a few glaring omissions here, making this feel like an incomplete package, but what is here will provide a good few hours of fun, and each game deserves to be played in its own right. There is a bit of an imbalance in quality across the titles, but it just emphasises the improvements made to the series as it evolved. The Wonder Boy collection gets a switch up score of 72%.
Thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. This review was written for us by Dave Morish over at Save Dex Gaming. So thank you very much, Dave. Please do check out his channel. He's just started doing some nice in-depth podcast videos on a variety of subjects which are really worth a listen. I did one with him, in fact, a couple of weeks ago talking about some of our favourite movie villains. It was a lot of fun to do. I'll put a link to that video in the top pinned comment. Please do give it a watch if you do have the time. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.